Hello everybody, I'm Kevin Patrick and I am here at the 2017 Ohio Bigfoot Conference with Lyle Blackburn. He's an author, a musician, and a Bigfoot enthusiast. Lyle, thank you for being here today. I appreciate it. Hey, thanks a lot. Um, what I wanted to ask you about was, uh, you're a Texas guy. How did you get into Bigfooting, first of all? Well, I think it was just something in my blood from an early age. You know, I just loved the subject of uh, cryptids, unexplained creatures, you know, initially, of course, uh, Bigfoot in the Pacific Northwest, Loch Ness Monster, and I would read those sort of books as a kid. Uh, later, later on, uh, sometime in the 70s, my parents took me to a drive-in movie to see uh, The Legend of Boggy Creek, and that took place in southern Arkansas, maybe about three hours from where I live in Texas. So that really uh, hit it home for me, and, and to think that a creature like this could live in the proximity uh, of my own state uh, really cemented my love, and later on as I you know, was an adult, looked at this more seriously, uh, and became a, something of a writer. I loved the subject of Legend Boggy Creek, and so ended up writing a book on the history of that. Can you tell me anything about your first encounter, or when you started going out? What was that one time that was like, I'm hooked, I know this is real, this is something I want to f further look into? Can you tell me about that? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's one of those things when you, you first go, you, you're almost like thinking at any second you could see something. You, you know, you're almost overlooking. And then, then as you relax and, you know, and, and go into the areas, especially where people have told me of encounters. You know, I've been interviewed hundreds of people that have had these sorts of encounters. So you know there's something to it. You know there's something out there. Uh, for me personally, uh, there was an incident several years ago in which we, heard, we were on a bayou and myself and another friend of mine, we, we hear this howl. And we hear it three times, and you could tell that it wasn't anything normal. It wasn't a coyote or the normal sort of uh, creatures we had heard over the years. And, you know, I grew up hunting with my father, so I'm quite at home in the woods. Um, it was probably about 200 yards away. Then later, as we ended up going back down the bayou and going to our camp, about the time we got there, whatever this was, suddenly was across the bayou channel and we hear it again in this very eerie howl coming up which you know the hair on the back of your neck stands up and you're thinking you know we couldn't see anything over there but you know potentially uh, you're in a proximity to a creature that you know very few people have seen. Uh, other people that go out there and have encounters like this uh, sometimes are afraid to come forward and, and even tell their story what would you recommend to them as far as getting their story out if they're a little bit shy in, in telling it? Well, I think, you know, nowadays it's much more acceptable to say you've seen something like Bigfoot or something unexplained. I mean, years ago, you know, you're, you had a reputation. People would think you're crazy. I mean, people are much more reluctant. But I think now if you do have this sort of experience, it's not hard to find somebody to report it to. I mean, of course, you know, with finding Bigfoot on Animal Planet has raised awareness for the BFRO. You could file a report there, or there's numerous uh, organizations in, in individual states that specialize in Bigfoot reports there. And you know if you report it to these people, they're not going to think you're crazy whatsoever. They're going to investigate and look at it seriously and keep your name anonymous you know they're very respectful you know if you report one to me I'm not a, announcing it on the news I'm looking into this and and respecting people's personal experience so uh, you know I would say just look for someone in your area to to report it to and get some advice on on what it is you've seen you know now how do you deal with skeptics I mean I'm sure that you've come across many people that have questioned your research and what you do uh, and they're sure there's people out there that just don't want to deal with that. How do you handle that? And what would you say to somebody um, uh, as far as ammunition for possibly getting into a, a conversation with a, a potential skeptic? Well, you know, I think first you have to identify with those people. And you can, it's understandable that people are skeptical. Uh, you know, and, and most knowledge that they have, you know, generally is kind of a pop culture version of Bigfoot. You know, it's, it's funny. I've seen Harry and the Hendersons. You know, it's, it's that sort of thing. So you just kind of have to identify with saying, yeah, I totally understand. You know, it, it sounds improbable and, uh, you know, you want to be 
rational in your thinking, but let me tell you about a couple of things that you probably don't know about. You know, things that aren't in the news, things that are uh, something that somebody who's looked into this subject for a long period of time can kind of tell you a few things that, you know, you would say, okay, well, that that's interesting. You know, maybe there is more to this. So I think you have to, you can't just try to sell somebody on it, sure. believe it, because... You know, you, you got to understand that people are going to come at it skeptically and, and sort of just, I don't know, get them in the water slowly. Don't just dump them in the deep end. <laughs> sure, absolutely. If you were trapped in an elevator with somebody, a skeptic per se, and had just a 30 seconds to try to convince them of the evidence that's out there, what would your main uh, hit or points be as far as trying to convince them as there's something out there? Yeah, that's a tough one because there, there is so much that I that I've looked into over the years. Uh, you know, I would just say that uh, you have to forget about the pop culture version. You have to look at things like there are footprints that have been found that have been analyzed by uh, anatomists and FBI fingerprint experts who cannot explain what these are. They've had dermal ridges. They're uh, they're primate-like, you know. They're, they're, you know, footprints of an enormous proportion. Um, you know, you've had things like that. You have, you know, the witness sightings over the years of very credible people. Not just people think it's all crackpots. They're not. There's, there's everybody from uh, doctors to biologists to photographers to everyday people who have seen this. So, you know, that would be what I say. It's Don't think that it, it's the sightings are by crazy people. Lyle, how do we at home get a hold of you or uh, look into what you're doing and your research and what you've got going on here? Well, you can start at my website, Lyle Blackburn, L-Y-L-E Blackburn.com, and that's got links to everything. You know, I'm primarily an author and have uh, written several books on cryptozoology and Bigfoot. And so if you go to my website, you can, uh, you know, find out what I've got going. You can find my books on Amazon, barnesandnoble.com, places like that.